Denny Poland writes in with a question on compensation plans. He says, there's many examples of public company executive compensation programs that produce misaligned outcomes for executives and for shareholders. What are some of the most important compensation-related changes investors and boards of directors could make to create a better alignment of interest between the shareholders and the management? Talking about what the economists call agency problems. If you're managing your own affairs, you're going to be pretty efficient because you're taking care of your own property. If you're working for somebody else, the truth of the matter is you care more about yourself and your future and your family than you care about the telephone company you're working for. So capitalism is efficient when when the people who are making the decisions are doing it about their own property instead of just as hired employees of some, say, state-owned enterprise. That's just the way it is. And, and it's just amazing to me how important it is to have a majority of the property of a civilization owned by somebody who's in charge of caring for it. That way the property is properly taken care of. When the Chinese went away from collectivist agriculture and let each peasant have his own plot of land and he got to keep the crop after his costs, the grain production went up 60% the first year. Now, who in the hell would want collectivist agriculture when it was that inefficient compared to capitalist agriculture? Well, the Chinese communists decided the hell with this communism when it comes to collectivist agriculture. They'd rather have the extra 60% of grain production. And, and they just changed the whole system. I greatly admire what they did. I think Deng Xiaoping is going to go down as one of the greatest leaders that any nation ever had because he had to give up his own ideology to do something else that worked better. You don't see the Catholic cardinals suddenly deciding there's no afterlife. But that's what Jing Zhou-Ping did. He gave up his ideology, his communist ideology, in order to make the economy work better. And being an absolute ruler, he could, he could arrange it. And he brought that whole nation out of poverty and the prosperity and over the course of 30 years after he made the decision. That is a very admirable thing to have done. And, and, and it was kind of a miracle. It's just amazing how well capitalism has served the communist Chinese. They, Ding Xiaoping said, called it communism with Chinese characteristics. He means, he, he meant one party government, but with most of the property in private hands and a fair amount of free enterprise. That's what he meant when he said communism with Chinese characteristics. I don't care what he calls it, he was right. It was a marvelous thing to have done for China. And it, it worked wonderfully well. And of course, we shouldn't be trying to travel, transfer more and more functions to the government. What they gave up on, we don't want to go that way, I don't think. <laughs>